What a weird, weird last couple of weeks it's been. Not only have the Wizards of the Coast reached out to me to say, we would like you to try and learn Magic the Gathering in like four hours and then face off against a chess champion and see how that goes, which I'll be doing next week. But also, more and more companies are reaching out because they have completely redone and tried to remove the barriers to entry to play their game. And this week, it was Warframe. Warframe is yet another game that I never touched. Good reason, actually. People know, and they knew, I don't really like looter shooters. If it comes down very quickly to just grinding out gear, Ah, my interest isn't going to be there. That's why I was so surprised at how much I enjoyed Path of Exile, because I'm a gameplay guy. If the game is fun, that's what I want to play. I'm not that bothered about chasing down the, master, the mystical shoes or the, the very special bracelets or anything like that. So we told Warframe that, and they said, that's fine, because that's not what our game is about. It is the impression, though, that comes out. So they wanted us to do exactly what we've done with some other games. The new player experience. What is it like? And then they asked us to do something different. We're going to change the game in the next couple of weeks. So we want to do a before and after. Did you notice? Was it any different? Did it make it better? Because there are so many people who have played Warframe day in, day out for years at this point, And therefore, new players look at it and go, ah, that guy has 8 billion Rububanites or whatever. Like, how can I possibly keep up with that thing? And you've no doubt put in stuff to keep your older players engaged. What about the new players who start with absolutely nothing? So, we're going to do this in two parts. I'm going to jump in, I'm going to talk about my first eight hours before these changes really come in. Then we're going to flip it up and see what it's like after the new changes, and that'll be in like a couple of weeks. Let's see how that goes. And also, stay tuned for my ass getting kicked by a 19-year-old chess champion in Magic the Gathering. That's going to be brutal, man. I mean, really brutal. <laughs> Let's go. So what's the first thing that always worry me about free-to-play games uh, that have some sort of grinding them? That that grind is going to suck. I always have this pessimism, and I'm sure we all do, that a free-to-play game is going to have some sort of really tedious grind, or you can pay for convenience, uh, and you can skip ahead a long way. Now, you, there is an element of that in Warframe, but we're not going to get there when you first start a free-to-play game, right? And we'll talk about that stuff later on. This was jumping in, first of all, straight into gameplay, like Doom. I was actually really surprised. Usually there's a really arduous, tedious cutscene. And there is some cutscenes where it's mixed in with letting you play and immediately throwing you into the power fantasy. Now, that power fantasy is also something I worry about when it comes to these kinds of games because typically they start you off very slow or they show you a glimpse of how powerful you're going to be in that Castlevania style is they give you a sort of end game character and say this is what you'll get eventually and then you get your actual character and it's like okay it's like treading through mud compared to what I was playing five minutes ago so I was actually super surprised that that is not the case here uh they the gameplay is ridiculously fast like super super fast from the get-go I was blown away by this it's really smooth the movement is fantastic and i know they've made lots of updates over the years but obviously that wouldn't affect anybody playing now uh to improve that massively it was it was great it was it was it was really really good it was good to get in there and just be flying at monsters and killing them to pieces which then raised another concern and i do i know i sound i sound like really negative but it's because i have all these worries about what's to come and that's the thing that's going to be difficult for me to beat with any game like this, is I'm worried about what's to come in terms of when does the wall hit, when does it get more difficult? Because that was something I felt early on. It's like, oh god, they've thrown me straight in, I'm super fast, I am a literal killing machine. And this is super fun, but it's also made it quite easy. I don't really care about any of the enemies. I don't fear them. I don't, I'm not afraid of anything. I'm just going to hurl myself into a group of enemies and slash them to absolute pieces, which is great fun. But eventually, certainly for someone like me who's gameplay orientated, is that's going to get old real fast. So that was my first concern that was raised in about the first 20 minutes of playing. It's like, this is really, really fun, but it could get tired. I was also interested to learn that essentially what the game is grinding out, because that's the thing, right? We are chasing down loot in a game like this. And you're actually chasing down different classes. Because your Warframes completely change, or the, the Warframes are the suits you wear, they change your character into a new character. And that actually was something I didn't know. I had no idea about that. So in that way, it's kind of similar to FF14 in that you completely swap character by changing one thing and then you level that up differently. What that also meant was that you could target what you want to get very clearly. If you want to research and look at things, you'd be like, oh, I actually want to try that. Or maybe in multiplayer, you actually want to try that. So then the grind becomes less of a problem. So I was like, okay, all right. 
I kind of get the setting here of what's going on. This isn't too bad. This is actually much better than I thought it was going to be. So then, I had to check out the story mode. So, to be full of clarity, we're going in completely blind. We have no idea what's going on. Therefore, when the game was presenting me with options, I was going to choose whichever seemed like the most ideal thing for me to do. And typically, what I like to do is do everything. I like to finish out the first area, see what's going on, check all the nooks and crannies, and do things like that. So I dove immediately into a story about an old lady whose husband had gone missing years ago, and it turned into an, a completely evolved quest line uh, in hunting, hunting down this lost husband who's been lost for years now for this lady. And I spent the entire day doing that. I was just mooching around, looking for this, finishing out the story, and it was really cool, because what they've done is a huge amount of set pieces which were involved drop ships and enemies and flying enemies and all this. And it very much felt like I was playing a fully-fledged single-player uh, Mass Effect-style game. That's exactly what it felt like to me while I was playing this. And I was enjoying the shit out of it. I was absolutely super enjoying it. They took me to the hub world where I got to see, more importantly, everybody else's player. Uh, can see the fashion style that comes into here, the fashion stalls. Uh, and it's very impressed by the color schemes and the customization I did. I know you guys think my, cus cus uh, my customization is awful. But well, it's fun for me. I like the hot pink coming in large, shredding things to death uh, with the bright yellow accents going on with it. I changed my ship so it was all beautiful. Put some Christmas decorations up. Why not uh, make it that little bit of fun? But visiting the hub world really showed you just how much extra there is. I think that's a good thing for new players to see is like how big this gets. And show them early. That's the thing. Show them early just how widespread it is. And also, how many other players are playing? That there are lots and lots of people around. Because when you're doing the single player version of any game that is a massive multiplayer game. You can get lost in the fact that you're playing a single player game. But to go to the hub world very early and be like, oh, there's loads of people playing this game. And look at that. That's cool. How do you get that? And start conversations because you're like, well, what is that Warframe? How do you get that one? Where do you, What do I need to be looking for in order to get that? And you could see that conversation happening in local uh, of people hunting down those things. What are all these vendors for? What are they selling? Are those things that I have to premium buy? No, they're not. Okay, those are things you need to be collecting and do all that. Now, I did get into some confusion here, which is exactly why we provide this kind of feedback. I had no idea why I was collecting a lot of the resources I was collecting when I was doing the early missions. I was picking up ore and opening crates to drop more ore and surprise things, and then some things were a little green. Yet nothing in the game was telling me why this would be any good. Uh, or why I should bother collecting this. Because then I started to question how do we go about doing the missions. Like in general, just as a base level. Because you can spend 15-20 minutes in a map looting everything there are sealed crates that need to be hacked to be opened so they look like they should drop something important and they do drop stuff yet nothing i could find showed me why i should care about this stuff it's like you got 300 of x okay well what's that for and i started to get very very confused by this similarly with the modding system the modding system is really extensive in fact it's how you power scale your characters while the warframe does give you the base abilities it's then in the mods you apply to the suits that actually make them more powerful and there are in-game tutorials but they're done in the way that's really sort of awkward for getting it good for decent players without it being obnoxious good for new players i should say is that they're a little brief and they're trying to make it welcoming and they do this also by having a an npc called orodos who is on the ship with you you have your own ship and he's kind of vocalizing kind of what you should be doing next. He's trying to give you a little push where to go. But they've also added a lot of humor to Orodos. Now, that's going to grate on people. It grated on me, especially if I wasn't doing what Orodos really was trying to get me to do. The rarity of mods being... patiently awaits compliance in using the new arsenal features. It is for the operator's own good. Me and you are going to have a problem. Okay. Group sent ability duration. Ordis patiently awaits compliance in using the new arsenal features. It is for the operator's own good. <sighs> because I like to read tooltips. I like to look into the menu system. I like to try and make things just to see what happens. If I don't understand something in a game, I'm just going to start messing with it so I see what pops out at the other end. And there was a certain point where Orodos was like, you really should go and do this bit next. And I was like, yeah, I will in a minute, but I'm messing around with this modding menu because the modding menu is really extensive. 
And I want to see what's going on with it. There's words here like cracked, broken. Do I, do I ditch those? Do I sell those? I don't know. I'm starting to get duplicates. Already in my first few missions, I'm starting to get duplicates. Shall I turn those into resource? And, and while that was happening, Ordos was consistently badgering me. And, and almost a 30-second cooldown with a 10-second voice line telling me to go and do something else. Uh, which made me want to turn him off in the menu. Although he was trying to be helpful. In the end, I quit out what I was doing and then went and... Did what Orodos wanted me to do so I could come back to what I was doing later. So something like that that's either on a one to two minute cooldown might be better. Just to remind, so it's not as obnoxious, but it literally felt like every 30 seconds Orodos was moaning at me to go and do something else while I was trying to learn a system that is involved and deep and is part of the end game. Uh, so that made things a little awkward for me. I still didn't really figure that out. I, I messed around with it. I kind of got the idea. I chose things similar to what we did with Path of Exile. I chose things that made sense to me. This does more damage. This does more critical strike, uh, which is fine for the most part. Uh, but figuring out the ins and outs of it would come much, 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 much later. Uh, one thing that was really cool is they very quickly, similar to in the hub world, was introduced me to the world bosses. I didn't know they were world bosses, but they're really cool. <laughs> it chased me halfway across a planet in order to bring me down and did eventually kill me. Uh, but that was really great as well, because you've got this big sense of a greater mission and a greater adventure ahead of you. Uh, in terms of there are large, outdoor, big-scale bosses that are very dangerous, very scary. I was talking about that easy, diff uh, they felt too easy, and then you got your ass kicked later on. Uh, which is like, okay, so there is more to it. And again, it started to drift away these fears i had about the game now this is where things get a little bit interesting guys i didn't do what the warframe guys expected me to do so uh we got contacted later on to say yeah interesting so in order to make this fun for my viewers and to add a little bit of spice what they gave me is what uh, was a list of things that they figured i would do or a new player would do and this is where you get that disconnect between what the Developers of a game expect players to do with their game. And then the reality is when you pass it out to a player, they don't do that whatsoever. And they had a bunch of things that they would typically expect a player to do within the first four hours. And then they had stuff for week two, which is like about eight hours, you'll start doing this stuff. And then, you know, so on and so forth. I did more week two <laughs> things than I did week one. And that's because I just went my own way because i did what seemed interesting to me now there's nothing wrong with that at all but it clearly showed uh, an obvious sign of huh that's not really what we expect players to be doing when they first start the game but it's absolutely and it made logical sense as to why you went that way and started doing this stuff while simultaneously in a sense not missing uh, missing out on not doing the stuff that we thought new players would do uh and Again, there's nothing wrong with it. It's not like I couldn't do it. It's not as if I hit a wall or anything. It's just that I went down a completely different path than what would be in what they would hope would be intended or that their guidance would kind of push you towards. Uh, so what we did then is we decided to try and figure out where to go next. And we uh, had some dealings with Iflin, who's a, um, a, a huge Warframe content creator. Great dude. Who was then looking at it and trying to expand the world in a way that would make more sense to see exactly what the game has to offer. So, it's kind of off the rails here in terms of completely blind. But, at the same time, it turns out, and this is why I was kind of okay with it. The game is way bigger than I thought it was going to be. It's actually huge. Uh, in in many different ways. I fully expected, as I said at the start, a simple looter shooter. You get thrown into a map, you clear the map, and you go out and you repeat, and you farm resources in order to make new warframes, and that's the way it goes. Little did I know you get a dog! Yes! <laughs> you get a dog, my name. Oh, my dude. When I found out you could get a dog, that was my sole purpose in life. I was like, I, I need a dog. I need a dog. And the hunt went on for a dog, which then opened up the universe for me, which is how it should be in any game. Is you see something you want, and then you're like... I want that. So when I see a, a giant shield in an RPG, I'm like, I want that shield. How do you get that shield? Oh, you have to go through this process and eventually you'll end up at the place where you can get the shield. And it's like, okay, so I wanted a dog. Which then took me to like four different planets because I was based entirely on Earth for the first five or six hours. Uh, and then it was like, okay, now we're in Venus, now we're on Mars, and the enemy types changed up because I was getting a little tired of the enemy types, and then suddenly the enemy types flared up into different types because I started spreading around the universe a little bit uh, and moving around to different places. And then I was like, okay, 
he keeps mentioning this uh, arc wing to me. What is that? And they're like, well, I'm not telling you. So it wasn't like I got everything spoiled or anything. It was like, I'm not telling you, but, you know, what do you think you need to do to get it? Uh, and I was looking, I was like, I don't know. And then I, I had a mooch around. I was like, oh, hang on a minute. Okay, now I see that certain parts of the map actually have a list of primary objectives, which I didn't realize until a good seven hours into the game, at least, is that you get these objectives. Like, ah, okay, I start to see now. You don't complete every planet, but you can start figuring out what is important to do on the planet by doing these things, which then unlocks outer space flying missions, which I had no idea existed, and are really cool Gundam-style things. And that's when it was like, there's a lot more here. And the message came through is like, there's way more than this, dude. There's way more than this that you have to deal with. And one thing I was really looking for by this point, after doing this cool stuff, was boss fights. Because again, the combat in game is still pretty easy. But what I wanted is something big and meaty. Because generally I can one to two shot things. So I was really looking for something big and meaty to sink my teeth into. I know there's world bosses, right? I know they're out there. But what is it? Is that it? Is, is there more? Because there are, there used to be big raids. Now it's more confined to the multiplayer side, which we'll get to in a sec. And they gave me a boss. Like the story eventually took me to a boss. So the pacing was actually really good on this. It took me to a big boss. Wasn't, it killed me. I lie, it killed me. But you do get a chance to come back and fight. Uh, but it was actually had mechanics. And this is where the game really picked up for me is when I had actual, actual mechanics to deal with, and I it was a total change of pace from what I've been doing earlier on. Uh, even then, I just, after the boss fight, I then discovered there's massive jumping puzzles and stealth missions and things like that in here. And I was like, wow. This... I was surprised. I was very surprised to find just how much versatility exists in the game and how much more there is yet to come. Let's talk about the multiplayer a bit. So, I told you, like, the power fantasy was surprising to me is how fast and how strong you are from the start. So... That kind of led me down a single-player path. I don't need help. It's as simple as that. You don't need help. I'm totally fine as I am. So what does multiplayer have to offer? So we tried it out. And in fact, the way they've done it is really good. Not only do the missions get much harder, and you can matchmake, of course, or play with friends, but what they've decided to do is really go with their old-school World of Warcraft style, which is that playing with friends or playing with other players massively enhances your gameplay massively enhances your gameplay like you'll move at six to seven times the speed you'll do aoe damage just by being in existence and you will start shredding hundreds of enemies uh, as you and as you move through the maps and i was really surprised they went down this road of like with multiplayer it escalates massively it hugely escalates into what you can do and also of course the other frames are really interesting whether you're doing mirror images or somebody's flying in the air and bombarding the area with artillery all these kind of combos work together, but the fact you can then buff each other and desecrate ground and do all those kind of things to get some good elements of teamwork in as the missions scale up to get much more difficult. That was super fun. Again, gameplay-wise, that was really in for me. But what I did find really good, and God, I wish this was implemented in some of the games, is when you play multiplayer, your mission will tell you this, this is the loot table, right? This is the loot table, and on, here, on there might be something you want. So let's, let's say you're making a prime you're really looking for a prime warframe one of the more modern ones that has uh the caster type stuff so it's got mirror images and it's got blink and it's got things like that and you drops from this mission right that's where it comes from if you kill the mission on your own then you'll get a, one of those loot table items to drop and it might not be the one you want you can go back and do it again okay standard stuff we're all aware for that in multiplayer though this is a great touch you can choose from everybody else's drop as well. So the loot table might have eight items on it, but if you do it four player, you get to choose one of the four items that drop, which significantly reduces the grind. Like massively reduces the grind in terms of things you're looking for. Really reduces it down and everybody gets to choose it. So what you could do is either you can team up with people who are looking for one specific item and say, right, let's just bash it out as four players and then all four of you get it, but it drops. Instead of it being, you know, a classic sort of MMO style where you're, you're passing it out amongst each other. And this was one of the, the best things I saw in my first eight hours of gameplay. I did get a little confused with a lot of the resources. This did make sense to me later on because then I started... To, they kind of gave you the resources before they gave you the things that you're going to be building with those resources. Uh, and make that work. But I was definitely much more impressed by this multiplayer system. Not only are you massively more powerful, which makes the game way, way more fun... Uh, because even more fun than it ordinarily is because you get to become this actual godlike creature and you get to slay 
actual enemies, uh, like armies of enemies. But then by multiple report, we're rewarding everybody by saying, oh, this is the four different things from the seven things that can drop here. Now you can all pick the one you want. Uh, and it's also really interesting to see what people value. So even though I might not be aware of what is the best item because I haven't learned everything, you can see people all gravitate to one specific thing, right? And you, you feel like... That's probably really good. I don't really know what it is yet, but, you know, that thing's pretty good. Uh, so I have to say, in the first eight hours, I didn't encounter... I think I played it for ten hours now. Uh, I did a lot more stuff than I'm mentioning here, but that's the details. But it's... In the first ten hours, I didn't really hit anything that was kind of a barrier or a wall. They did give me stuff to spend, but I didn't do that. I was really looking at the the true introduction to the game to see how it goes. I feel like I've only just scratched the surface. So I think my best game plan right now is to play a bit more before I can really compare it to the updates they're making to the quality of life and stuff for other newer players to see how it goes. But I can't say that in the first nine hours I encountered anything. And I'm certainly more excited to see what else is in store for me here because, once again, expectations smashed perceptions destroyed not correct uh so we'll see how that plays out going forward so thanks for watching and if you've got any tips for me leave them down below of things that i should check out i'd be really interested to see all right so that's my first eight hours of warframe it's not at all what i expected in any way shape or form actually uh especially when we got to space combat because i, I figured it was kind of a bit like destiny 2 where you know you, you're kind of running and gunning and you get to choose your favorite weapon and that kind of stuff and yeah it's it's not like that at all so i'm actually really excited for what i still have yet to uncover because apparently there's a lot more here than what i've already seen but i have a dog now which makes my life much better so we'll see you in a couple of weeks to see exactly how far this rabbit hole goes down because my first impression is not what this game actually is so we'll see how it goes stay tuned for that and i'll see you soon bye guys